50 years ago tonight, the Nazis were planning one of the most pivotal battles of World War II. And early on, the Allies had more than the Germans to battle. We're talking about the weather, the other enemy. The Battle of the Bulge is widely regarded by historians as a desperate, poorly executed Nazi military strike. But as we saw in the Allied victory on the beaches of Normandy, weather plays a key role in the planning and the execution of all military maneuvers. Tonight, Newsbeat's meteorologist Paul Gross shows us how the Germans used weather to their early advantage in that battle. December 1944, Allied troops have pushed the Germans across France from Normandy to the River Rhine, but the Nazis are set to launch their final desperate gamble, a massive surprise counteroffensive through southern Belgium and Luxembourg. Once breaching the thinly stretched Allied lines, the Germans hoped to turn north and capture the port city of Antwerp. The biggest obstacle facing the Nazis, however, was tremendous Allied air superiority. And the only way they could protect their troops was by grounding the Allied Air Force with an extended period of bad weather. For this, Hitler leaned heavily upon meteorologist Werner Schwertfeger. Although Schwertfeger died in 1986, his longtime colleague, Dr. Heinz Ledau, who was drafted into the German Weather Service early in the war, understands exactly what Hitler and his generals wanted. Yeah assignment was two days before occurrence in this coming month of December, you have to forecast the date of a period of five days or more in which fog and or low clouds will, uh, will cover continuously a wide area west of the River Rhine and north of the 50s parallel approximately including the region of the Ardennes. An unrealistic request for a 1944 meteorologist? Absolutely, but Schwartfeger somehow nailed the forecast. He said strange things happen in nature. It really was unbelievable. In the three days came and passed, and according to all information we could gather and very late ones, the weather was exactly like the uh, guest forecast. Allied meteorologist Maynard E. Smith, Schwartfeger's counterpart across the lines, drew the same conclusions. He made a great forecast, no question about it. I am impressed and, you know, I don't like to blow my own horn, but I made the same forecast. We were both right. <laughs> Smith's mobile weather units at the front lines watched as bad weather grounded Allied planes for almost a week. Smith's commander, General Tommy Moorman, cannot underscore enough the importance of those detached weather units. They passed all their weather observations, which they took just like regular weather stations, and uh, uh, they were passed to all of the units. So we had those plus the uh, French and, and some other uh, weather reports from the area for our maps and forecasts. They did a good job. They, was, they suffered some hardships and... Uh, uh, but they stayed in there, and they did a good job. And I think everybody realized it and appreciated it. Everybody. The Germans used the weather to their early advantage in the Battle of the Bulge, but the bad weather had to end sometime. And when it did, <laughs> Allied Air Forces crushed the final Nazi offensive. In Detroit, I'm Paul Gross, Newsbeat. Tomorrow, Paul shows the tremendous suffering endured by American troops in the heart of the bulge, suffering compounded by severe winter weather and lack of food. The weather became the other enemy during that historic battle, and the Nazis used it to their early advantage. Newsbeat meteorologist Paul Gross shows how the severe conditions took their toll on our American troops, most of whom spent 24 hours a day exposed to the elements. Cassidy with the American forces in Belgium. During the first few days of the drive, the enemy really had two penetrations in progress instead of one. There was a small bulge to the north around Stavelot and Malmedy, and a much bigger bulge to the south toward Bastogne. A sizable American force is now completely surrounded in it. If the Germans smash into it hard enough, it may become a center of a siege of historic implications. Using bad weather to ground Allied air forces, the Germans scored quick victories early in the Battle of the Bulge. Meteorologist Maynard E. Smith briefed the Allied High Command on the first day. I remember telling them that uh, it was a bad situation, that we were going to have low cloud, fog, both rain and snow for at least two or three days, and that I could see no opportunity uh, for any air support whatever. Bradley said nothing. Hodges asked for a few details, and Patton says, good, 
We'll kill every one of them. <laughs> if only it had been that easy. The low clouds and fog those first few days were so bad that for the first time ever, the 101st Airborne Division was driven to its destination. And that destination was Bastogne. And about three in the morning, they woke us up and said, we're moving out. I said, well, we just moved in. And uh, <clears throat> so we got packed up and we're going in this uh, in the convoy. It was so cold that night and freezing and everything else. We just had to grab what we had to get and put on our backs and, and what ammunition we could find and just go. And looking out the road, the fog made visibility perhaps a quarter of a mile. And I didn't stop to stare, but as I ran past, I thought, how close are the Germans out there? Are they just behind that first little screen of fog? The fog was so bad that you could have walked a regiment between two positions. A German patrol, a large German patrol, walked right through uh, the position of the 1st Battalion of the 501st Regiment, which was less than one mile from Bastogne. The snow began on the night of December 21st. It was a, uh, about six inches on the ground at that time. Uh, the temperature had dropped considerably. At night, it would be down around zero. Well, I've seen them tanks going down the road. You know, they were sliding down sideways. It didn't have no track. It was so frozen. We were very hungry. Ammunition was getting very low. We were going around looking at dead bodies and trying to find out what ammunition we could scrounge up. I, I remember on one soldier, I had found uh, a black piece of bread and a little bit of butter. When I ate that, I mean, you'd eat anything when you're hungry. We did stick out like a bunch of so sore thumbs. Or you could tell if somebody was dropped in front of you. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> if, if they were always in there. I could tell by the clothing if it was one of ours or one of theirs. And our clothing would stand out more than theirs. If the Holocaust and the Bataan Death March best symbolized the barbaric nature of our World War II enemies, then Omaha Beach, Iwo Jima, and the Battle of the Bulge symbolized the pinnacle of tenacity and courage. The battered bastards of Bastogne, as they would later be called, weathered the Nazi onslaught, as well as the weather itself, and won the last great battle of World War II. In Detroit, I'm Paul Gross, Newsbeat. It took Allied forces nearly a month to repair the bulge in their lines. Hitler's final defeat came just four months later. Interesting Quite historical a in look. History, wasn't it?